everyone and welcome back to another Stitches and Scribbles podcast. My name is Erin and I'm here to show you all of my crafty things that I worked on this week. This has been kind of a busy week. I've got um, multiple sets of guests coming into town over the next two weeks. So I've been trying to do a lot of cleaning and getting ahead on videos and making sure that, you know, my craft projects haven't taken over the entire apartment, all that stuff. So I don't have a ton of new stuff to show you today. As you also know if you watched the last episode, I put myself on a yarn band so I don't have any new yarn to show you. Um, but I do have some other craft store acquisitions that are kind of yarn related but not actually yarn. So let's go ahead and do those first before diving into the whips and um, finished objects. First thing I got, um, if you've been watching along, you know that I am really excited about going to the Renaissance Fair this year. I made a whole um, bodice for my costume out of cotton yarn, and I was really inspired by the outfits that the hobbits wear in The Lord of the Rings. So the first thing I purchased from Joann's was a locket charm from the brand Hildy and Joy, but it's a little hobbit door and I thought that that was just so cute. So I'm definitely going to be wearing this as part of my costume. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to put it on a necklace chain or like pin it to something and wear it more as like a brooch or a pin. But I was really really excited to find that. I think it's just so cute and so perfect for all the stuff that I made. The other things I got are hopefully going to be on my Etsy store in a couple weeks. I still don't have the Etsy store finalized because I'm waiting for a few more things to line up on my end as far as how Etsy will pay me and how to do shipping and stuff like that. Um, I originally wanted to do just digital patterns on my Etsy so only things that I wouldn't have to ship out but I have really enjoyed making stitch markers lately. And I figured those are really small, they're pretty easy to send through the mail, they're not very heavy, I don't have to really worry about them getting damaged because they're so little and they wouldn't break going through the mail. Um, so I decided that maybe once my Etsy store opens I'm going to try to do some like limited release stitch markers. So I don't really want to do ones where like I have the same ones in stock all the time, I'll just do like bulk sets if that makes sense. So if I see like seasonal beads or seasonal charms that I think would be cute for stitch markers, I'll just make however many I can make with what's available to me and then that's it for that design. I'll move on to the next one. But I got two sets of beads that I was really excited about to make stitch markers with. I also want to make sure when I do stitch markers that I'll do four stitch markers in each set plus one big progress keeper that looks different from the other ones just because that design idea kind of appealed to me. So this is the first set I picked so I would make the stitch markers in these faceted green glass beads and then do little Celtic knot progress keepers with these little charms. I thought that that was a super cute combination also kind of very um, on brand for all of my renaissance fair stuff. But I thought that these this combination was super cute and even though it's like kind of St. Patrick's Day themed or Irish themed, um, this is a combination that I would use year round so I thought it was a good thing to start with also to appeal to my like fantasy Ren Faire um, people <laughs> like me. Um, I thought that those were super cute. And these were also purchased from Joann's and they're also from the um, Hildy and Joe. It's Hildy and Joe, not Hildy and Joy. Um, these beads are natural green adventurine and these are just labeled as metal beads. So I thought that was a cute combo. The second combination I purchased is very Halloween themed. Um, I purchased some big pumpkin beads last time I was there thinking they'd be good stitch markers. I think they're actually too big. So I'm probably going to use those um, more for jewelry or pins than for stitch markers. But I could not resist these candy corn beads for stitch markers and the smaller jack-o'-lanterns for a progress keeper. I thought this combination was absolutely adorable and so fun. So hopefully those will be in my Etsy shop soon. Again, like 
probably going to do a set of four stitch markers with one progress keeper per set. Um, that may be something that I adjust depending on what I find. I noticed that at Joann's there was not a set number for like different size beads and how many came in the pack. So some of them were odd numbers, some were even numbers and all that stuff. So depending on what I find and how numbers work out, the exact number of stitch markers and progress keepers per set might change with whatever is available to me at that time. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I actually had a really nice conversation with the cashier at Joann's when I checked out because she asked what I was making, so I told her all about it. Um, and she was really excited. She told me that she also crochets and was actually really interested in buying my stitch markers. So I had to tell her, like, I don't actually have anything set up yet. Right now this is, like, just in the planning stages. Um, so now I have to go back and find her if I <laughs> to get my Etsy shop set up because she told me to let her know. So that was kind of a fun interaction um, that day that made me really happy and kind of realized like, oh yeah, if I put stuff out there, like, yes, people might actually buy it, um, especially if it's stuff for crafters. So that kind of solidified in my brain that making stitch markers for Etsy, like, was in fact a good idea and not something that was like overdone or anything like that. Um, let's go ahead and jump into finished objects. I've got a couple to show you. The first one is one where it will be a YouTube tutorial eventually, but this was part of my like working ahead frenzy <laughs> I did over the last couple weeks. So I think this tutorial won't actually be out until like October or November, but I decided to pick up my Dungeons and Dragons series again now that it's getting colder out. So I finished one project from the series that will be coming out more the later end because it's definitely like a cold weather piece. Um, but this is the half orc bandana cowl. You can see it comes down in the front and has a fold over like turtleneck. This is a really warm and cozy piece. Um, I'm really excited with how it turned out. It's just got simple ribbing for the front and a triangle shape to go down the front of the chest with some lobster claw cables that are set really close together so it gets kind of that like braided look instead of the traditional lobster claw. I had so much fun making this. I haven't worked with chunky yarn in a really long time and this is definitely like a five weight yarn. Um, but I noticed that a lot of the half orc characters in the D&D &D handbooks wear like big chunky armor or things like that. So that was where um, this piece was inspired by was kind of that silhouette that the characters typically wear in the images. So yeah, I thought that that turned out great and you will get a tutorial for it in a couple months. So fear not, it will be out eventually. Um, that one I made ahead of time because I knew it would go really fast with the chunky yarn. So I went ahead and did it, filmed everything and set it to upload so that one week in the future I'll have a week where I won't have to worry about finishing a tutorial for that particular week. Um, I find that that helps me plan a lot better if I kind of stagger my really long complicated tutorials with ones that go a lot faster both for filming purposes and for like when they come out to have a good mix of things each month. Um, having one bullet journal video a month kind of helps with that process because there will always be at least one that I can do in one day, have it ready to go, um, and the editing for those doesn't take too long because it's a whole process of like watching the drawings come to life. So I don't really have to edit that much other than changing the speed and doing a voiceover, which doesn't usually take me that long to do. Um, usually the voiceovers are just kind of one take. I write out a couple notes of what I want to say during the voiceover, but otherwise I just kind of narrate what I'm doing and maybe add in some anecdotes here and there if it applies. Um, but yeah, I've been trying to get a couple of those like quick videos done like way in advance so that when I get to that month I have a week where I can focus on a longer project or do another round of getting ahead and not have to worry about the video for that week. Podcasts are really easy to film. Those aren't really much of a problem unless I'm going to be gone for like the entire week, which I don't think is happening <laughs> at any point 
in the very near future. Um, so podcasts, usually easy to film, don't have to do them ahead of time, but those longer tutorials, um, I try to get them done as far in advance as possible so that I'm not panicking the week of, of when the tutorial comes out. I definitely did that with my um, Harry Styles TikTok patchwork sweater. I finished that one the day before the video came out and then had to edit the whole thing and that was very stressful and very uh, panic inducing so I would like to not repeat that process if I can. So that was a really long winded way to explain that you won't see the tutorial for the half orc cowl for a couple months. Other things I finished and want to show you so that I can wrap it up and gift it today. Um, I am giving my husband a little like pre Ren Fair present. Um, this is his first year going to the Renaissance Fair, first year going in costume, first year going with me, all of that good stuff. So I wanted to make him a couple things for his costume. Um, I did think it funny for the first time ever that for this event, his clothes do not have any pockets and mine do. So I made him one of my belt pouches. I do have a tutorial for, or not a tutorial, but like a crochet with me video where I made one of these for myself. So I made his in gray. I kind of originally wanted to do crocodile stitch for the flap on the front, but I didn't figure it out in time. So I just continued with my half double crochet. It has a um, loop through the back to feed a belt through. I had to make his a lot bigger because his belt for his costume is a lot wider than mine is. But that is the finished product. It has a little clasp at the front to keep everything together. And I made his a little bit bigger than mine because his phone, wallet, and keys will take up more space than mine will. So yeah, he's got a nice little pocket for his costume. I also made him a water bottle holder. Um, a lot of times the Renaissance Fair is really, really, really hot. and It's important to stay hydrated when you're out and walking around, but carrying a modern water bottle oftentimes looks really out of place and they don't, I actually don't know if they have a rule against backpacks or if I've just never brought a backpack because it didn't match my costume, but carrying water is always kind of an issue for Ren Fair days because you don't really want to like bring an extra bag that you have to carry around, but water bottles like are usually pretty big. I found these small glass water bottles on Amazon. They're reusable bottles. And then I started with a double crochet circle and just built up along the sides in a cylinder with a drawstring at the top and a loop to put it on his belt and it stays pretty secure. You can see that the top of the water bottle like sinks down in there a little bit, but it doesn't bounce a whole lot and the yarn kind of provides a little bit of a cushion for it, but it's still pretty easy to pull out and it carries enough water that you don't have to stop like every 10 minutes for a refill, but it's not so big that it becomes really, really heavy. So that's for his costume, it matches his belt pouch. And I also made one for myself in a plain beige cotton to match some of my costume pieces. I have two different costumes I'm using this year because we're going two weekends in a row. So for my other costume, I have, well, let's back up a second. I have the costume where you've seen the pieces I've made for it here on YouTube um, with the like beige stained glass color comfy cotton yarn. That is what this water bottle holder is for, is for that costume that's all kind of browns and pastels and more like Hobbit inspired things. But the costume that I'm actually wearing this coming weekend, so it'll be Friday when you guys see this, it's currently Thursday when I'm filming. Um, so tomorrow when you guys are seeing this, I'm going to the Renaissance Fair with my sister-in-law and a couple of other friends, um, possibly my brother, if he gets back to me and <laughs> we figure out that plan. Um, that costume is a lot of black. I don't have any handmade things for that one, I don't think. But the belt that goes with that costume does already have a water bottle holder on it. So that's why I made mine to match the new costume that I'll be doing the following weekend. So really excited to use this. Same basic idea. I did do an extra row of double crochets on this one because it's a thinner yarn. And I think I went a couple of extra rows at the top, but otherwise it's the same idea. 
couple rows of fillet crochet with some rows of plain double crochet and the drawstring and the little loop to put it on a belt. So those will be nice and handy for Ren Faire. It's not supposed to be super hot here this weekend. It's going to be like 77, like maybe 80 at the most, which is actually pretty good for Ren Faire. Most of the park um, for the Wisconsin Renaissance Fair is shaded, so it doesn't feel like too blaringly hot. It's not as bad as like going to Summerfest or going to the state fair where like everything's outside and it's all concrete and really hot. There's a lot of trees and even though there's no like actual indoor areas a lot of the um, vendor booths are shaded and the eating area is pretty much completely in the shade because of all the big trees so it is never quite as hot as it seems like it's going to be provided that the humidity is not like absolutely terrible. So hopefully it'll be okay. Um, I think it will be a pretty nice weekend for fair and I'm really excited to be going two weekends in a row. We are not hitting any of the theme weekends this year. Um, our Ren Fair usually does one every weekend. This year they're only doing two. They had, I think Pirate Weekend was this past weekend, and Steampunk Weekend is like the, I think was the last weekend in July or something like that. So we missed both of them, um, but I'm not too upset about it because neither of the costumes I picked this year were Pirate or Steampunk based. Um, so it kind of worked out. Um, I really like, I think Pirate Weekend is usually my favorite to dress up for, um, but it's nice to kind of have a break and a change from the costumes that I usually use even though a lot of the pieces I already had I'm just mixing and matching them with other things. Um, I think that is it for finished objects so I can start showing you my current whips. A lot of them are going to be similar to the last round that I showed you. So let's start with the old ones. Um, this is my red scrap shawl that you've seen before. There's the stitch marker that shows where I was last week. So I did do a couple of rows on this, um, although I have another project that I've been working on more consistently because it's for a video, so I want to get it done and out um, more quickly. So this one has kind of taken a back burner, but I really like how that dark red is showing up now. It does make the whole thing look a little bit more balanced now that there's some dark colors in with those really bright ones. And this is just a... <coughs> Excuse me. It's dry and dusty in my apartment, so my throat is definitely feeling it. Um, this is just a moss stitch triangle shawl, so really easy pattern. Really like how that dark variegated red is showing up so far. Um, the next project to show you, I really did not work on a lot this week at all. Um, you will recognize it from the last couple weeks. I did work on it a little bit though, so I didn't completely abandon it this week. I made sure I at least did a couple of rows so that it wasn't totally in the same place as it was last time I showed you. But this is the Peacock Fan Stitch Shawl I'm working on for my sister-in-law. You can see from my stitch marker I did um, another couple of rows on there, but not a ton. I will get it done eventually, I promise. Um, but that's where that one is at so far. It's probably like two feet long and I want it to be like maybe six feet long I think would make sense since it's a shawl. I'll probably just go until I run out of the yarn to be honest. That's usually what I do with projects like that. Um, the next one, I, I did show this last week. I do remember that now. Right? I showed this one last week. I think I did. We'll see if it has a stitch marker in it. That's what it tells me. Um, this is a shawl that I started when all of my cousins were here because I wanted something simple to work on. Um, so this is just a rectangle shawl in the Moroccan Nights yarn from Lion Brand in the color Wishes. I am on the second skein now. I definitely showed you last week because there is a little stitch marker all the way back here. I had one day where I was just really cruising on this one, not quite sure why, but I love how these colors are working up. They're so light and delicate, but it still has those like very bright pops of coral in there as well. Really pretty yarn. 
I think that maybe Lion Brand discontinued this one because it was on clearance for a while at Joann's, like really, really on clearance and in a separate area. And now I don't see it there at all. So I think maybe Lion Brand discontinued that one, which makes me kind of sad because I just discovered it. So hopefully something similar will come out soon. Um, if not, I guess there's enough other stuff similar to it with that like marled texture and the glitter. But I really liked those color combinations and I thought it was kind of clever that they, um, I think all of the color names were either characters or concepts from the Aladdin story. Like there was a colorway called Jasmine, one called Magic Carpet. Um, this one was Wishes. There was one called Genie and Sultan. So really clever yarn line. So I'm kind of sad that it might be disappearing. Maybe it's just on the Lion Brand website now and it's just not in stores anymore. I don't know. I didn't put enough effort into looking it up. The last whip I have to show you today is another D&D pattern. This one I'm hoping will actually come out before the half orc cowl will because it's a little bit more lightweight. Um, so this one I'm hoping will come out in like maybe October, maybe sooner than that. I'm not sure yet. Um, but this is the half elf blanket wrap. It's not like really a blanket wrap, but more of a rectangle wrap. I might have to change that name. Um, I am using the raindrop knit stitch, which is a really easy knit purl pattern. This is probably going to be one of the easier patterns in that series because it is just knit purl. There's no increases or decreases. Um, it's pretty simple. I do have a stitch marker on there that I just stuck in um, to make sure I had one to go with this project, but this is just from working on it today. I think I started it almost a week ago, probably Friday or Saturday of last week was when I started filming the tutorial. So this is close to a week's worth of progress on it, but I did have other projects that I was working on at the same time. So I'm really excited for this one to be done, although it's probably a finished item that I will gift to somebody because it's not something that I really need in my wardrobe in that color. So one of my friends or family members will probably be the lucky winner of that one. I forgot to talk about the yarn. The yarn for that one is the Yarn Bee Soft and Sleek DK in the color Pretty in Peacock from Hobby Lobby. It looks like this. It usually comes in a donut, so I cake mine up as I'm working on them. Because whenever I work out of a donut, the whole thing, like somehow implodes and falls apart and I don't know how I manage to do that every single time I knit with a donut yarn. I try to do it center pull because it seems worse if I do it from the outside so I usually just immediately cake those up like I do with most of my yarn at this point to be honest um, just to avoid big knots, tangles, all that stuff. I think that is all I have to show you for this week. Um, I did just see that I got a couple comments on my um, frog with me video that was released yesterday. So that was really exciting. I'm glad that people liked that one. Um, that was definitely a unique idea. I don't think I've seen other yarn YouTubers like really talk about projects they're frogging and I thought it was important to show that you don't have to finish a project if you really don't want to or if you don't have the time or the energy to do it at that moment or if you realize you would like the yarn for something else. So I really had fun making it and had fun kind of clearing out my stash and feeling like I started fresh. Um, I do use a cart now to store my whips so now I am down to my only whips are things that are on that cart and my temperature blanket which is in a really big bag that sits on the floor because it doesn't fit anywhere else. Um, but that has definitely helped me cut down on the amount of projects I have going at once because it all has to fit on the cart. I'd like to downsize it even more at some point and not have like my huge project bin that has to sit on top of the cart so that I can put my um, knitting machines on the cart as well because I haven't gotten those out in a while, although I think I will have to soon. Ooh, that's a good thing to talk about. Um, my 
mom just told me that her neighborhood is doing a like rummage fair and craft fair um early September I think just for like people in the area it's not a formal thing so I think I'm actually going to try to sell some finished objects that weekend and get a feel for like like a more low-key version of like running a booth and making stuff for a craft fair so I'm really excited about that. Um, I think I'm going to be selling mostly like knitting machine made items because they're a little faster to churn out um, and I can go through some of my yarn stash that is like Red Heart Super Saver, I love this yarn from Hobby Lobby, like all of my basic yarns if that makes sense. Um, I also have a whole bunch of scrunchies that I've made in the past year because every time I was like close to the end of a ball of yarn I just made a scrunchie with it if there was enough yarn left to make a scrunchie. So I know I have lots of scrunchies that I can sell. Um, so maybe we'll round it out with some hats and headbands. Um, I probably won't do anything like in the scarf neck warmer shawl department because those are a lot bigger. Um, but like little things, maybe some ponytail hats because I've made some of those before too. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the podcast. If you like what you heard and want to follow the rest of my crafty journey, you can leave a comment below, leave a like, and subscribe to the channel for more crafty videos. Um, I do things like knit, crochet, um, bullet journal, so drawing stuff, um, as well as the occasional jewelry making or other <laughs> crafty DIY. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everyone!